Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.11, an Eagle Dynamics FA18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 11, GBU24. We've already covered the normal Paveway 2 laser guided bombs, however the GBU24 is a Paveway 3 class weapon, and it's a little bit different, slightly more advanced in some ways. It has a penetrator warhead, so it's perfect for use against hardened structures like bunkers. It has larger fins, as I can demonstrate here, uh, so it can actually glide further and be released from a greater distance. And it has a, a more accurate uh, laser spot search tracker in the nose, uh, so it's uh, slightly more accurate, although you're probably not going to notice too much of that in, in most cases. So uh, what I'm demonstrating here is the maximum loadout of GBU-24s. You can carry them singly, only, on pylons 8, 7, 3 and 2. Uh, those are the inner and outer wing stations. Uh, and of course, in order to utilize them, you're going to need a laser designator. Either uh, self-designate with the AT Fleur or Lightning 2. Uh, I'm carrying AT Fleur here. Or you're going to need a buddy laser from another aircraft or a laze from a ground unit like a JTAG. So with that in mind, let's go through how to set them up. Uh, the weapon profile shows up as GB24. We're going to enable air to ground mode. We're going to select the GB24. And as before with all the other laser guided bombs, it's initially going to be in an unusable state. Uh, but that's okay, we'll correct that in just a moment. Uh, before continuing, I'm going to bring up the flare pod on the right hand multifunction display. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Waypoint 1 and Waypoint Designated. And we're now looking at a target there. Uh, okay, with that done, let's go down to the right-hand console, uh, the Sensors panel, and turn on the Laser Designator. And it should now show up as L-Arm at the top of the display and L-Arm up here on the HUD. And both flashing on the SMS page and on the AT Fleur and on the HUD, it's flashing code, as if you needed any more of a warning that you're missing something. Uh, so let's go ahead and program the code. Now the pod is already set for 1688, I'm just going to do the same. So if I select, uh, actually where is it again, code, here we go. <laughs> if I select code, uh, hit the code line select, enter 1688 and press enter. This one is now set. I'm going to step to the next bomb and do the same. 1688, enter. They are now both programmed. Uh, actually, in fact, I've got four of them. What am I thinking? Step again. 1688, go. Step. 1688, go. Okay, all of them are now programmed. So, uh, with that done, let's take a little look at the modes that we've got. This bomb operates in a rather different fashion from the other laser guided bombs. Um, it has what's called a computed launch allowable region. Uh, if I go ahead and flip master arm on, it's now going to show ready. If we go to mode, we can see that we have CLAR PP, CLAR SL and manual modes. We're going to cover the two CLAR modes today. And basically what's going to happen, um, I'm first going to demonstrate SL, which is straight line. If I choose CLAR SL, if we then look down on the HSI, it's going to draw a little box for us, which is the uh, launch allowable uh, range. It's basically a, a box within which we can drop the weapon and uh, expect that it will, in fact, impact. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's basically what that is. Let's see if we can actually... Yeah, if we zoom this down a little bit, you get a much better indication of that. So we need to fly the aircraft to get inside that box, and we can then drop. Now, that's SL, or straight line. In straight line mode, it will always draw the box uh, in between us and the target, so basically on the current heading. If I choose pre-planned, I then have the option to enter the heading from which I want to attack the target. The system will then draw the box in the correct location for me, and I'll need to fly around to come in on that heading. That's really good for situations when you know that you're going to want to have to uh, drop that bomb from a particular direction. Everything is exactly the same uh, in both modes, with the, the only difference being the, the heading from which you're going to attack. With SL, you're always attacking from your current heading. With PP, you'll need to maneuver the aircraft uh, to attack from the heading you've programmed. We'll do SL first. 
and then mechanical fuse because this is a penetrator bomb we're going to set tail uh, and that will allow the bomb to penetrate the target before exploding uh, now the other thing we've got is we have a uh, oops we have sealar override with this selected we can drop the bomb at any time with this off, the bomb will only drop at the optimal range, which is the range in the middle of the box, basically, in between maximum and minimum range. And then if we go to UFC, as always, we have the ability to set quantities, multiples, and intervals. Uh, and also, if we are in the PP mode, the UFC also gives us the option to adjust the CLR. So go CLR, set heading. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. We'll do SL first because it's nice and simple. So mode CLR, mechanical fuse tail, quantity one, multiples of one. The other thing to do is if we look over at the targeting pod, we're going to make sure that trigger is not boxed. With trigger not boxed, the firing of the laser will be completely automatic. And that's what we want today. And I'm now going to go ahead and choose a target. I've pushed sensor select switch to the right. I've got the diamond. I will now be able to slew the pod and have a little look at what we want to hit. I think actually I'll just hit this uh, poor unsuspecting hanger. That's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to put it into auto. There we go. That's nice. So I've got that. Target's at 9.5 nautical miles. That information is repeated on the HUD. So up here on the HUD, we've got uh, time to the target, or t uh, time until we're in range, so 59 seconds. Uh, where the target is coming from, FLIR, as in the targeting pod. The mode, we're doing CLAR, SL. The time on target, so this is the time when, I think this is basically the time when the bomb will impact. We then have the ASL as normal, azimuth steering line, with a maximum range, a minimum range, and then the optimal range will be in the middle. A dot will travel down this line, and when the dot intersects the flight path marker, the bomb will drop. If we enable CLR override, the bomb will drop as soon as we press pickle, uh, which in this case we don't want. And if I look back down at the HSI again, once again we have the, uh, the LAR showing up on here. So we want to be inside that box, and then the bomb will be able to be dropped. Let's uh, take the aircraft out of automatic pause, and let's fly down the ESL. And let's drop a bomb. Uh, and as before, uh, the laser status is confirmed on the top center. If we were going to buddy laser for somebody else, we'd probably want to put it into trigger, and then we would hold down the gun trigger to fire the laser. But because we are self-designating, I'm going to leave the laser on completely automatic for this one. 20 seconds. Ten seconds. I'm pushing and holding pickle. The dot is moving down the line. Line is is uh, full. GBU away, flashing, and you can see immediately the laser is firing. Let's watch this on the targeting pod. Uh, for some reason, when I changed the field of view, it moved the location that I was targeting. Uh, let's see what we hit. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Boom. Okay, well, it hit what we were pointing at, <laughs> but what we were pointing at was not the target. But that's fair enough. Oh, wow, okay, we've set up some secondary fires there somehow. Interesting. So, uh, that worked, and you'll see the laser is automatically gone back uh, into standby there, into armed mode. Okay, for the next one, let's set the mode to pre-planned, and let's demonstrate what it looks like when we define a heading that we want to attack from. So, I'm going to go here, I'm going to choose UFC, I'm going to choose the CLR, I'm going to choose the heading, and we're going to go heading 0, 9, or 0. Enter. You can see it confirmed there, and it's confirming it to us that it's a true heading. And if we look down at our HSI, it should display the box for... Oh, actually, it won't display the box yet. We need to come around, and then it'll draw the box when we're in the, uh, the kind of right orientation. So for zero, 09 or 0, I'm going to go round to the right in order to achieve that. So let's go off to the right. And see if we can make that drop nicely. 
Uh, and this one's showing ready. We can confirm CLR, PP, tail fuse, quantity 1, multiples 1, heading 090. Zero, zero. Uh, currently the pod is masked, but when we start to come around it will... Uh, uh, it will show us the target again. And while it's masked, the system is confirming that we don't have a set target because Flare is flashing. So you get quite a lot of warnings in order to, to know that something is right or wrong. There we go. Flare is now not flashing and we have an image. As we come around, I will select a, a target to hit. I got a bit of cloud in the way there. Okay, target will be kind of off the wing now. Yeah, we can see there's a big cloud bank in the way. I can see those fires that I've set. Don't know how I managed to set off two fires, I guess. Something exploded and went flying, I guess. I'll continue coming around. Okay, I'm going to slew this a bit and see if I can actually find a hole there where there's something I can actually target. Just seeing my own aircraft for now, and cloud. Anything interesting down there? Okay, we'll reset it back to the original site. There we go. Now we've got our box, because it knows what angle we're going to be coming from. So let's go ahead and steer in order to get ourselves into the right area for that box. So I'm going to go autopilot off, and I'm going to maneuver a bit more aggressively here. I want to basically be turning south. There we go, just like that. Target is off to the left. Okay. Cannot see anything down there yet. Let's uh, maneuver ourselves more to the south and get away from this cloud. That's better. Starting to see the target area now. I'm going to pop. Oops. I'm pop this back into autopilot. And we're just going to target whatever I can actually see. So let's go up here. Whatever that is, that's fine. I'm going to put it into auto. There we go. And that's set. That's our target. And you'll see that we have a box. It's just off to the left-hand side there. Let's now steer towards the ASL. Get ourselves on that target. And we missed the box. <laughs> I was too close in. Okay, let's go back out again very quickly. And then we'll come back around for that one. Okay. So yeah, we're about five miles out from the target. I'll wait until seven, and then I'll come back around. Seven miles. Let's come around. That's more like it. On target, just about. And we want to maneuver so that we're coming onto the target at the right heading. 
and we get inside that sealer. There we go. We're going to get inside the box this time, I think. There we go. Just a few seconds. Dot is coming down. I'm holding holding the pickle. In zone. GB away. Pop it back on autopilot. And then if we watch on here, the laser should automatic. Oh, the laser actually popped off. I forgot that it does that when you change weapons. Laser arm. Let's select trigger, and I'm going to depress the trigger just to make sure the laser is firing. That'll get it tracking. Eight seconds to impact. Boom. Perfect. Direct hit. So that's something to remember. <laughs> Each time you change weapon, the, uh, the laser designator actually disengages. You need to flip the switch again. So that was a demonstration of the GBU-24 in, in CLAR PP and CLAR SL. In most cases, you're just going to use SL. Uh, PP is just a very nice um, additional feature in order to ensure that you attack from a set heading in the event that you have a requirement to do that. So uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment, and I'll see you all next time.